welcome to the Big Bang. In today's programme, I'll be showing you how to make this owl mobile. There's the strange but true story of chocolate. How a bitter bean was turned into a sweet success. And we explore planets far, far away with the Big Bang alien rescue game. But first, a trick. Gareth, we know you can juggle, but can you balance? I am the most well-balanced person you'll ever meet. Right, OK. Well, can you then balance that box on the side of that table so that more than half the box is off the table? Probably not, because balance is all about having the same amount of weight on one side of uh, an object as the other side. If you go a little bit further than that, it'll just fall off, of Are course. Are you sure about that? Yeah, certain about it. Look, every time that'll happen. If I just edge it out, it falls. Always? Every time. OK, how do you explain... <clears throat> That's weird. Uh, OK, I've got an explanation. I reckon you've changed the laws of gravitation no. or you filled the box with anti-gravity. No, but the trick is in the box. Look, if I show you this one with transparent sides, you see the box has got flour in it. What I'm doing is I'm tipping the flour into that uh, side of the box right. so most of the weight is on the side at the table. That is weird. Definitely yeah, 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 weird. Yeah, yeah, yep. you see, that's weird. But what yep. about this? This is a tetrahedron. And this looks even stranger if we just balance it on there. Now, that is weirder than the winner of Weird Week Award. I'll show you something weird. Ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for Sir Egbert the Weird Flip, the somersaulting egg. What does he do, then? Well, he somersaults, doesn't he? He will perform a death-defying somersault, leaping from one glass to the other. Go on, then. OK. Now nah, this trick's too good to do now, but I will do it at the end of the programme. <laughs> I'm decorating our new flat with these bird mobiles. Look at the way they flap. Very realistic and very graceful. That's down to two things. A clever balancing act and an ingenious elastic hinge. They're real easy to make. You can make them from uh, bits you'll find lying around your house, but what we will need is a large sheet of card. Mark out the pattern for your bird's wings and face on the card. Now you can make it whatever pattern you like, but if you like, you can also download a bird pattern from the Big Bang website. Now you need to mark off some holes, two at the root of each wing and two about a third of the way up. Now, it doesn't really matter where these holes go, just as long as the distance from this hole to this hole on this wing is the same on the other wing. Cut out your pieces, then you'll need to thread elastics through the holes that you'll make in the root of the wing and pull it tight. Then you'll need to do some balancing. So take three 2P pieces and glue them just shy of the tip of the wing like that and then cover them up with brown paper. Do the same for the other wing. Then attach your wing to one of these milk cartons. This is a short, stumpy version because I'm going to make a barn owl. All you have to do is connect that bit of elastic over the bottle there and the other elastic band over the bottom part of the milk bottle and line up the wings so they are on diagonal opposite sides of your milk carton. Now it doesn't much look like a bird at the moment but it will do when I've added uh, my bird face stuck on there and my bird tail which is just made out of a bit of card. Then you need to add some string. Now the string you thread through the holes a third of the way up the wing and attach the string to that piece of stick, like that. Now, it doesn't seem to hang right. It doesn't look very realistic at the moment. That's because you need to do some balancing. That's easy. Turn your owl onto its flat face and then pour some water into the milk carton. But you might have to do a bit of experimenting to get the weight right. And this time, hopefully, your bird should hang more correctly. You can see that I've actually put a slight bend in both wings, so he's really realistic. Now, if you look at Barney, the barn owl over here, look at the way he moves. It's actually a pendulum. You've got a pivot at the top and a swinging weight at the bottom. In fact, Barney is a series of pendulums connected together. Now, you don't just have to make an owl. If you want, you can make a little duck like this. He's made out of a ketchup bottle. Or my favourite, which is this big, black, scary raven over here. And he's made, would you believe, out of a mineral water bottle. Nothing to crow about. <laughs> Nothing to crow about. <laughs> well, I think he's cool.
What are your favourite sweets? Jelly babies? Sherbet dips, maybe? Mm. Well, my absolute favourite, of course, is... Mmm, chocolate. Today's strange but true story is about the sweet-toothed Dutchman... Who invented the world's first bar of... Chocolate! chocolate. Mm, Get yeah. off, this is mine! Yeah, it's it's it. really nice! Conrad van Houten was a chemist who lived over 150 years ago. Back in those mm. days, the only way to have your chocolate was to drink it. Odd drinking chocolate. It is, uh, how you say, exquisite to drink. But also, it is very hard work to make. There must be a better way. Yes, it was hard work making it, and the methods they used hadn't changed in over a thousand years. It was the people of South America who discovered the cacao tree. They called it the Tree of the Gods. But the fruit tasted disgusting. Then someone came up with a rather odd idea. Instead of the fruit, they took out the seeds. They dried them, they crushed them, they added a little water to make a paste and then topped it up to make a drink. When explorers brought chocolate back to Europe, we just added loads of sugar. But apart from that, our chocolate drinks were made in exactly the same way. Hey, excuse me. Until Conrad van Houten invented the world's first chocolate press. Pulverising the beans and mixing them up with water was difficult because of all the cocoa fat. But with my squeezy press machine, I can squeeze out all the cocoa fat from the roasted beans and it makes for me a nice dry powder. Van Houten's dry powdered chocolate kept better and was easier to package and sell. And so now it is easy to make the chocolatey drink. Hmm. But the best thing was what Van Houten did with his cocoa butter. He didn't want to waste his cocoa butter, so he thought he'd try mixing it back into the chocolate powder. And he came up with a brilliant new invention. The world's first ever chocolate bar was born. And it's been an incredibly popular sweet ever since. Not bad for a bunch of dried out old beans. Hey, get off! <laughs> it is my invention. OK, Star Trooper Jones, let's rescue the aliens and avoid the mines. We're going in. OK, go down, the sir. hatch. Ooh. And... Clamp open, sir. That's it. Clamp closed. Clamp closed. And back to base. Take off, sir. Keep yeah, we've got him. Now. Keep her steady. Yeah, steady, sir. And release the clamp. Release the clamp, sir. Yay! Let's land the craft. Another successful mission, although I'm a little concerned that that alien may have bashed one of his tentacles on the way down. Now, these aliens are really easy to make. All you have to do is start off with a, a plastic skittle. Lop off the top of the plastic skittle and you've got something that looks like this. Add a pair of pipe cleaners for alien arms. Give him some big, boggly alien eyes in the form of a pair of ping pong balls on matchsticks painted purple and of course all aliens have fantastic spiky yellow hair. Uh, you don't have to use skittles to make your aliens, in fact some of these aliens here were made from toilet rolls. To pick your aliens up you'll need a lander. The lander starts off as a plastic flower pot with four holes around the side. Now thread a piece of string into each of those holes and if I turn it the other way up you'll see that you then have to tie each piece of string to a rubber band and this means that when you pull the string it opens the rubber band and when you put the whole thing over an alien and loosen the string you've picked the alien up. Clever. Now that's the tricky bit, the rest is quite easy, it's just decoration. For the lander legs we use lolly sticks with a bit of polystyrene cup on the end, just slot that in around the side and the outside of some paper plates for some rings and for the communications device a cotton reel, more lolly sticks and half a plastic ball means that you can communicate with other craft. Paint the whole thing silver, looks rather snazzy. Now these alien mountains started off life as two triangular pieces of corrugated cardboard with a slot cut in the bottom of one of them and a slot cut in the top of the other. Slide one over the other so you've got a sort of base like that and then cover the whole thing in brown paper. Then to really make it look alien you'll need to paint it a good alien colour like black or grey and if you're going to spray paint it don't forget do it outside. 
The mines are just sponge balls with lolly sticks stuck through them. And the trick is to put them on mountains where they're going to get knocked off if you're not very careful when you're rescuing the aliens. Another go, Gareth? Oh, yes, interplanetary alien rescue. Yeah, well, this time I want to get that cow with the rocket pack. <laughs> Open the yeah, hatches. Yeah. Clamp open. Down, go yeah, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, yeah. grip. Take off. Yay! Yay! Today's big question. What was happening right here 70,000 years ago, last Thursday? For this, you'll have to join us in a time machine. OK, it's not exactly a machine, but in caves like this, you can go back in time. Because in these caves, you can find out what life was like tens of thousands of years ago. If you know where to look for the clues. And the clues are to be found here, at White Scar Cave in Yorkshire where, over the years, water has worn away the soft limestone. And these caverns act pretty much like a time capsule. They're very good at collecting and preserving things, like bones. This is the jawbone of an Arctic fox, tens of thousands of years old. And this is the skull of a brown bear. Now, you'd usually find an animal like this way up in the frozen north. Now, it's cold down here in the caves, but nowhere near cold enough for creatures like these. Aha! A clue. That means that on the surface, it used to be freezing. They also found some hippopotamus bones in a cave underground very near here. And hippos live in hot countries. So, in the past, the weather must have been much warmer, but also much colder. Hmm. Lovely. But there's another clue in the cave which can help solve this puzzle. It's inside these funny-shaped rocks. Because they have distinctive shapes, some of them have been given names. For instance, this is Jaws. The witch's fingers. <laughs> and the budgie. The rocks were actually formed by rainwater, which is slightly acidic. As the rain trickles through cracks in the ground, the acid dissolves the rock, which is then carried along by the water. That rock is then redeposited to create these extraordinary shapes. Now, if you want to know what it was like on the surface thousands of years ago, all you have to do is to look inside those rocks. By taking slices of the rocks, geologists can work out how fast they've grown, a bit like reading the rings of a tree trunk. When the rocks were growing faster, it means there was lots of rain. And strangely, lots of rain means warmer weather. For all the clues down there in the cave, we can tell what this place was like. There would have been a tropical swamp here, complete with hippos. Until an ice age arrived, which brought with it bears and arctic foxes. And that's what was happening right here, 70,000 years ago, last Thursday. OK, Gareth, it's time for Egbert Flip to do his trick. <laughs> yes, roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen, and witness the most death-defying egg on this planet. He will perform a complete somersault from one glass into the other without the aid of us. Get on with it. <laughs> All right, OK. Watch this. Here we go, an egg flip, Yeah, right? go on, go on, go on. <laughs> Voila. Yeah, that's really good. How does that work? Easy. What happens is, when you blow at an egg like this, some of the air, if the egg's tilted this way, gets trapped between the glass and the egg. The air then forces the egg out of the first glass into the second one. Brilliant, eh? Y you yes. know, I think that's so clever that you really ought to be able to do a triple somersault. <laughs> now you're asking. Good <laughs> luck. Stand back for this, I would suggest. <gasps> Oh, well, try again. Go obviously, on. some work to be done on yeah, that yeah, one. Go on, go on, go on. Really cracked. 